Yeah, I told you, Stuart, it's not healthy to eat a 40-year-old tin of beans. Hi, everyone. Hope you're well. Welcome to Kitchen Gadget Testing. Forty-six out of seven. Kitchen gadget testing, 46. How the heck have we done this many? Wow. Now, first up, as always, you can probably recite this bit in your sleep already, but please consider commenting down below that some of these gadgets can help people with disabilities before we're going, that's rubbish. All right, because we've got a good mix today. I'm actually really excited for this video. We've got some really useful ones and one epic nostalgic novelty moment for me. I'm just I'm so, oh my gosh. This is an apple, AKA a pom. This is a pomme de terre. It's basically an apple called Terry. It's, uh, I think terre is ground. Apple of the ground. Comes <laughs> in Chicken of the Cave from uh, Anchorman 2. We're gonna need this in a bit, but it's first up, an absolutely genius thing that I've seen. I've not tried it out yet. Very excited for this. Oh, this from Oxo Good Grips, ching ching, uh, is called the Quick Release Apple Corer. This is genius if it works. So when it comes to coring apples here in the house, we actually have um, a favorite one, particularly for the kids. Uh, so this is one where you can sit your apple down. Well, if it's got a tail that is, sit the other way around, push it down and it will segment it for you. From time to time, we just want to core the apple. So we'll use this one, you know, like a standard corer, which is kind of what this one, as we'll come to in a minute, replaces. You go in like that. Okay, so you go through, you pull out your core. Yeah, not bad. But then it's always this. I actually sometimes push through there and you're hitting the, the serrated edge, which is really dangerous. I don't know if there's etiquette to getting this bit out because you kind of go like that and you snap, look, you snap a stump off like that. What do you do? I'm generally, if, if this is just user error, which of course we know it can be, <laughs> I don't mind. I, it might redundant, make this redundant. We don't know if this works yet. But this is 100% legitimate. What I'll do at home, I'll get like, um, I am at home. What am I talking about? This is my house. Do I live here? Uh, I get a chopstick and just push it out like that. Which isn't bad, you know, that's, I, that's why I don't hate it, but sometimes I have found myself just doing that without a chopstick with my finger and catching it on the blade. So this is hopefully where this comes in. And straight from the bat, you can see that it's got a bit of a wider circumference. Yeah. Line up the core with the center of the apple, squeeze the handle and insert into apple. Okay, ready? Squeeze, and it's in, it's locked as one like that. In we go. Ooh, I don't like that feel. Because you still want to twist it, don't you? Let's try it this way. There we go. There we go. Ooh. Boom. They like that. Straight out, holding tight of it. And then, hopefully, I did have a bowl here for a reason. Huh? How cool is that? It's taken out a massive, like a crater, that is. Hello. So that's your difference. You know, it's taken out quite a gap. But you can see like if you're in a hurry, you're making an apple pie, you can just go like that, straight in, boom, like that. Uh. Yeah. Folks, there are two things in this world that can scare off vampires. Garlic and a fawn pug. Yeah. No, disclaimer, the, the pug might not be true. Which is why if you are going to release a novelty item in the world of garlic chopping, uh, you're going to call it the Gracula, aren't you? Yes, you are. I uh, saw this in a shop the other day. I was out actually trying to buy some swim shorts. Ended up buying no swim shorts. Bought four gadgets. Uh, <laughs> Gracula garlic twist. One twist of his head and he'll crush your garlic to smithereens. <laughs> I was going to dress up for that bit, but the budget doesn't stretch that far. Well, I'm going to wash it and then we'll uh, test it. Bit close, wasn't it? Right, you know how to get your skins off. There's a gadget for that, but of course. See that? We gave our garlic a skinhead. Okay, so I've given this a wash and there was nothing else in the box at all. It's basically that, something holding it in place and there's a base to it, which is, it's like it's, it's cloak. Uh, and, and that's his head. <laughs> that's the bit that sort of serrates. So we're gonna put the garlic in there. It's got a little central spindle thing and it's these plastic blades, which are just ultimately, as we go like that, it's gonna crush it. <laughs> it does feel quite small capacity. I will say that from the off. And the box does actually say, place the garlic clove. So I wonder if it just does one at a time. So we'll go for a, a fairly large one. We'll stick that in there, you see? Right, that, we've just got to make sure that we line the circle up. It's probably gonna crush it anyway. Let's have a little listen. No, it didn't. <laughs> it's in, okay, it's in. So now we, 
twist back and forth. Well, at first it was crushing loads, but I can't hear any more now. I'm just enjoying spinning around Dracula's head, really. It's quite fun. Now, I possibly would have liked it if they kind of fell out the bottom, um, but I think they might have got around that because it might not be amazing because it could get stuck. So let's have a look. You look for me. I haven't looked yet. That's pretty good. There's a few bits up there that you could just brush off with a little silicon brush or something like that, a little pastry brush. I like that. Let's, you try and, let's put two in there. Oh, let's live dangerously. Let's load it up because... I think it'll be all right. So you really push it down just to get the circle in. Ah. Oh, actually, now there's four cloves in there, isn't there? And don't worry, folks, I'm not being paid to promote this or any other gadgets. If I ever do, I will disclaim that. You can count on me. Sorry, my uh, battery just died on my microphone, so I had to swap that over then. Maybe you hopefully didn't see a difference there. We're popping it out, boom. So it can definitely do more than one bit of garlic. But there we go, that's done. I like it a lot. If you do like the gadgets so far in this video or any of the others, if you look in the description, there should be a link to buy uh, that gadget if you wish to. And Amazon is so kind, they'll actually give me about 0.01% of any referrals that I give, which is great because that helps pay for a garlic bulb, basically. Yeah. <laughs> this is a bit of a weird one. I don't know if you have the shop TK Maxx in your country, um, but we have one literally around the corner from where we live. And that is an absolute gold mine for random products in general. I was in there about three weeks ago and I spotted this thing. It was $7.99. Click that link. <laughs> uh, it's a guided chopping board. So this is basically the packaging is supposed to imitate a knife, okay? It's just cardboard. Fits any knife. That's not a knife. Where's Mick Dundee when I need him? Uh, dishwasher friendly and BPA free. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Ooh, satisfying. I am called Jet Man. So I'm gonna try this with the cardboard one first of all. We sit the knife in there, and we clamp it in, and we should be able to go like that. You see how it moves? All right, so this is obviously quite dangerous. Um, I'm highly trained. Disclaimer, all, the, all those disclaimer things. Be, be careful, seriously. Please be careful. This is a very, very sharp knife. Let's get it flush, all right. We really want it to clamp on those discs though, don't we? There we go. Is that in? I can pull that out. Oh, that's a bit pants, isn't it? Now, nah, see that just pulled out of it. Look. I'm gonna use a blunter knife. This, this will take things off. Just got a slightly different knife. Uh, it's coming out. Yeah, that is not a good grip at all, but hey ho, we've got good movement. You can sort of strafe. And it's coming out. <laughs> it's coming out! No, if you take it over the notch, it seals it really well, but then it's like it doesn't want to be there. How has that affected the clamp? <laughs> it's popped it over, okay. But that's okay. We go like this, yes. It's moving, but Look, it's coming out. I need this for some ratatouille tonight. But the reason I talked about the pomme de terre earlier at the start of the video was because I was thinking, oh, we could use this gadget, right? We can use this and really make the most accurate French fries. <laughs> also like, like a T-Rex trying to cut a potato. It doesn't feel comfortable, it doesn't feel natural. It feels, it does feel unsafe, yeah. I think that a much better manufacturer could probably make a decent version of this if it doesn't exist with like measurements on it and stuff like that as well. It's got a good potential, but I think it's also a, a, a scary device. Oh, I've got herbs actually, try herbs. Oh, let's try herbs. If you wanna feel like you're a pro. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fun. But that wants to come out, look, it wants to come out. It, it, you want to come out. The one other thing that I had an idea for it is right behind your ear. Oh, cheers. Uh, cheers for the cheese. Uh, this kind of reminded me as well when I saw it of like, you know, you get these flashy cheese cutters with the wires. Uh, kind of like that. So how you could go like that and get a really accurate slice of cheese. No, you couldn't because it's popping out. It's, <gasps> it's actually, it's broke. See this here, that seal? By, uh, look, 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 see that bit there. That's coming off. But my plan was to turn it into some amazing sort of funky 
accurate cheese slicer. I need to take it a bit closer. <laughs> it only gets caught on there. Ah, uh, oh, no, it's breaking everywhere. I'm going to leave this block of cheese for the kids and Mrs. B because they love it. I can't stand it. A bit like this gadget. As you guys know, it was my birthday uh, last week. And actually, this time last year, somebody bought me uh, for my birthday uh, a pack of beer. Just a friend was like, oh, some beers. These actually have a shelf life, I didn't realise, of uh, less than a year. Not that you should leave them that long. They've just been out in the garage uh, and they've had cobwebs on. I've given them a wash this morning. Uh, but that's fine, we need them. I need four, really. This by Joseph Joseph is the Barwise. Anyway, magnetic bottle opener. I saw this and I was like, wow. Uh, yes. Catches caps as you open, which I really like the idea of. This is not my favorite bottle opener. Oh no, that goes to these babies. These are some flip flops I've had for blooming years. I think they're made by Reef. I need to get some new ones actually. Got air bubble in it and everything, but flip them upside down, boom, two bottle openers. So you uh, can soul your on and be the soul of the party uh, if you want a beard. Anything is tsh, smell a bit of feet, doesn't it? Never really thought of that, but they're brilliant. Not magnetic though, and they can't, according to this, do four at once. See that bottom diagram? Four at once. That's why I've got four bottles out. I'm not actually going to wash this. I'm going to live life dangerously. Um, it's very light. It's almost like a pen with no ink in it. Does that move? No? Okay. Does that even move down? No. <laughs> Durable stainless steel opening edge. Okay, that's this bit. Holds up to four bottle caps. Oh. Huh? Musky. That still tastes the same, actually. But apparently, we can do up to four in one go because of the magnet on there. Look at that. <laughs> Whoops. Let's see if I can pick it up. <laughs> yes! Oh, beautiful. But it says you can get up to four on there. Let's see if we can do it. Come on. All right, well. Yeah, bloomin' well can. I actually thought this is gonna be rubbish. It's so simple, it doesn't do anything. It's so lightweight. But that's an absolute charm. And as much as I would love to drink four beers on camera, uh, we're gonna finish this video with a very nostalgic drink. But before that, I think you're gonna love this. You might remember recently, uh, I found the One Touch, One Touch, the One Touch jar opener. Oh my gosh, was that good. Ladies and gents, I give to you the One Touch can opener. It's basically the same looking thing, I think it's from a different brand, actually. I think it might not be, uh, but it looks very similar. Uh, two year guarantee, it opens tin cans. So to open a tin can, for some people might be like, yeah, that's it. But this can hopefully really help people. This handy gadget opens cans effortlessly with just one touch. Press the button to start, then press it again to stop. Oh, this one you actually have to do a little bit. The other one you literally just went, oh, sat away. What the? It blew my mind. And there it is. It is literally like a little mouse. I browse the internet. Oh, look at this guy testing a can opener. I'm sure you must get variations of these tins in your country. When I was actually in my late teenage years, I was kind of like living off of this on toast before I started really wanting to learn how to cook. Um, <laughs> there's some strange concoctions inside these. I can't believe they still make them. But my point is this is a, in this tin, uh, there is no ring pour on it as we discovered the other week. Maybe that's a sort of like a budget cost thing, but we stick this on and we press a button. I don't think I need to touch it. Okay, that was my concern. I tell you what, it's blooming going round it. It's dancing, it's making the most of its camera time. <laughs> it just wants to keep going. It stopped. Has it stopped? <laughs> it's going the other way now. Stop, yeah, stop. 
boom. How cool was that? I think if I kept it going, it would have kept going round and round and round. My thing's coming off. I'm not unhappy about that. Oh, sorry, mate. Are you trying to lick it? Are you trying to lick it? Stop it. No, it's not real. I do love how sort of neatly, safely as well, it's taken that lid off because you know when you sort of do it yourself, you, uh, you're left with a fairly sharp edge. This is perfect. It's just coming straight, almost like the opposite of when they put it in the factory and they press these on. We've just taken it off, baby. I wanted to have a bit of a scenario. So with the ring pull opener, which I actually gave away to a relative that would uh, help them massively, because that was good. Um, but a scenario where say, oh, I've got my ring pull. <sighs> I can't do it now, can I? <sighs> oh, there we go. <sighs> oh, I broke my ring pull. Oh no. It's okay, I've got my one touch can opener. I'm gonna stick it down here, and line it up. You literally just, actually what will you do? Sit it on and pull it tight. <laughs> it takes a while. You have to really rev it up. I do love the fact I'm not touching it. Okay. Um. Oh, oh my gosh, because it took the outer edge off of it. Brilliant. So there you go. If your ring pull ever breaks, you got one of these in your pocket. Just fire it up. I love it. Now. Last up, we have some nostalgia. Ladies and gents, there was a time where I used to attend uh, convenience stores, small shops um, on a daily basis and stare in wonder at a particular machine. It was of course, the slush puppy. I actually bought this last year. I'm gonna do a video, hopefully with Stuart sometime called Will It Slush Puppy, all right? Uh, but uh, yeah, I bought it and it's like, yeah, that's cool. And I went in the shop where I got it from and now the branding, has gone. It's just called like an ice slushy maker. So of course you can still get slushies now, but I don't know if the kids these days, they don't know what they're missing out on. You're missing out potentially on slush puppy. There was something about the eyes on the pooch. It kind of transfixed you like, I just, I, I, I come here for a chocolate bar, but I want a slush puppy. It was just insane. The most sugary icy drink you can think of, the syrups which has come with this gadget would just entice you. Oh my God. And then you'd have some. But sort of like chunks, little shards of ice, not completely broken down, not smooth, but just chunks, slushy. You know what I'm talking about. But this thing, yeah. Uh, and these syrups combined will basically transfer the color of your tongue to various luminous colors. We've got red cherry to enhance the rouge. The rouge. <laughs> Hello, mate, you want some rouge? French again, out uh, of your tongue. Red cherry or blue raspberry. Now that was the one. If you wanted a blue tongue, you got a slush puppy. Hopefully, we can replicate that today. For generations, people all over the world have enjoyed unforgettable slush puppies. Slushies are memorable days out, and now you can finally have this iconic machine in your home. <sighs> that sits in there, and then that goes basically up on there, and we've got a dispenser handle somewhere. I actually don't know where that's gone. <laughs> oh, it's this side. Oh no, it's on the actual thing. Oh, there it is. There we go. Oh, so it sits in there. That's how you set it up. And on the side here, uh, off, and then if you want to dispense your drinks or you want to mix it. So we're going to mix it first, then we're going to dispense it. Okay, it could get a bit noisy straight away because it says it's best to have the mix on straight away before you start adding anything. So that's this side. <laughs> it's quite loud, sorry. All right, so we have filled this canister with ice. You see that? Now we use this thing and get two caps full of salt. It's a good job I've got quite a lot of salt to hand. One, two. Add in 40 mils of water. One, I really don't want to be touching these ice cubes now. Two, three. Just wash that away a little bit with the water. All right, where are we at, where are we at? I should be mixing, I'm not. Fit the inlet cap to the lid. Right, okay. Slowly pour your syrup mixture through the syrup inlet located at the rear right of the lid, so here. So we'll go for blue raspberry. As I fill it up, it should sort of go into here. Oh, there you go. Mix. Well, the ice is gonna to start to crystallize this. It's gonna all mingle together, but it's gonna take 15 to 20 minutes. Basically, like when you're whipping up meringue and you get stiff peaks, that is the kind of look we're waiting for. It's gonna freeze it to that point where it's kind of like curdly, like making waves. 
you know? Uh, but it has made me realise that as a child, I was basically just drinking very strong syrup with some ice in it and salt. Right, we're already 10 minutes in and the level of the ice has dropped massively to like nearly a third of the way down now, that's all. So it says to top it up with the ice as well. Okay, um, make sure you don't overfill it. Update folks, that was half an hour. I've taken the canister out. I didn't want to disturb your lunch with the sounds of grinding of slush puppy. Okay. Just for 10 minutes, I'm putting the, the, the bucket in there and I've got loads more ice. Oops. And do you know what? I think I might actually whiz it outside. Not outside, but it, this room here is really warm, but through there is cold. So I'm going to probably do it in there. All right, so here is our much cooler laundry room. We're making slush puppy by the dryer and the iron. All right, so whilst the thing's out there whizzing around. Tell me if I'm doing this right. Yeah, hold it together. Twist it as you turn. As you Twist? Twist it, yes, it serrates it. Yes, it. Okay. Yeah? I got it. And now yeah. pull it out, but keep twisting it. Now let go of it. Ah, oh, so you have to stick your finger in to get push yeah, it out. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Nice. Very clever. What did you just say to me? <laughs> How am I going to eat my apple? How are you going to eat your apple? I normally it... hold it like that. Yeah, but you can eat it. There's nothing there now. But is it just not going to fall apart as I eat it? No, it's the core's gone, isn't it? But you can still eat the I've whole apple. I've got nothing to hold on to. Like, no grip. Folks, it has been another hour. Uh, so much so that Mrs Barry will be home from work uh, in another hour. So what I'm going to do, I've stopped it. I'm going to put the canister in the freezer like it's an ice cream maker for an hour and a half at least when the kids come home from school i hope i can make it work so we can share the joy of slush puppy <laughs> the kids and mrs barry are due home any moment now so um let's get whizzy there we go everything's under control okay let this be a lesson to all of you read instructions fully this syrup needs to be diluted very very small print and doesn't really mention it in the main instructions it just says add the syrup that's my excuse mix five parts water to one part syrup i didn't mix the five parts so 20 percent of it should be the syrup i've gone 100 percent. right so i've got the syrup there out the rest is empty 200 mils in there so this up to a liter in there right. of water yeah let's do it all right, that looks a bit more or less sugary. <laughs> I was saying earlier on the video, I was like, yeah, there's quite a lot of sugar in these slush puppies, isn't there? Where do right. I pour this then? Um, right, let's take that out, pour it in. Pour it all the way in, yeah. We'll do it the opposite way. Now we sit this in. The ice goes in. Okay. And it's all, the good thing is, I love how you're kind of like emerging from a blender thing. <laughs> Hello. What do you think, Mrs. B? I think this is gonna work. <laughs> So that sits on there. Ooh. That's it. Caps back on. And we're back in business. Look, 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 look. That was 20 minutes later. Look at the texture on it. Look at it. Girls, I think we've got slush. Yes. Ready? The dispense is killing me. Are you hit, <laughs> Becky? Look at your arms. I was sorry. The, the, the no, slush. Yeah. Look at human slush, human slush, slush puppy. <laughs> there you go. Right. Oh, right, turn the handle. Oh, look at that! Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Look. Huh? Oh my god, brain food. Oh, ooh. I see your tongue. Huh? Wait. My tongue? Ah, it's not bad. I can't believe it worked. Did it work? Well, it has okay. worked. It's slushy. Ooh. Brain freeze. <laughs> you got brain freeze. Go then. Miss your tongue? There it is, blue tongue. I would formally like to apologise to Slush Puppy and the manufacturers of this machine for trying to basically freeze syrup for the, my entire day. Another kitchen gadget testing video in the bag. That one was the nostalgic one that took up a long old time today. The rest were good. I love that bottle cap opener. I love the can opener. Really cool ones today. I say links are down below. Now have a barrel for one. Check out the rest of them. I think these guys are in uh, slushy land. <laughs> Bye.
Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Cyber's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Out the tongue. Don't touch that. Stay away from the slush puppy. That's good parenting. <laughs>